Now, when the Finnish hockey team won the world championship, the Finnish people were praising. For me, worship has been something very intimate and very deep, the relationship with God. And, and the primary goal why we worship is God and he called us to worship. For me, worship is a moment of peace from the surrounding world. You can play for God and give thanks to God and forget about everything for a moment. Worship is, uh, is intimacy with God. It's relationship. It's, it's all about uh, knowing God in the most intimate way and, and, then, and then honoring Him and glorifying Him for who He is. In every group of people, there is something that they worship and believe in. And what is it that they believe in? That's all I want to find out. Walk with me in the worship team. To me, worship is a lifestyle. And uh, worship is not for me. It is not for my personal gain, but it is for God, because worship belongs to Him, and worship should come from Him. And through the working of, his, of the Holy Spirit in our lives, then that causes us to worship Him. And we worship Him because He is God and we are not. So there's a difference between worship and praise. Worship has to be based on the Word of God. Worship has to be based on who God is. And on the other hand, when we talk about praise, praise has something to do with what God has done in our lives. So it's a declaration of our thanksgiving to Him. Um, who do I worship? I worship God Almighty. I worship Jesus, I worship Holy Spirit, and I worship Father God. I believe that they are one, and when I'm worshiping them, I'm worshiping the Almighty God who has created everything, and also me. So I'm not worshiping an unknown God, or God who can't hear me, or God who is created by human hands. I'm worshiping somebody who has created everything, and who knows me, and who desires to be with me. That's who I worship. Okay, so how does a generation or a culture affect worship would have to be each generation finds a new way of worshiping than the older one does. Like they find new ways and they want to change it. And so they just worship in newer ways that their parents or their grandparents have worshiped. And the real truth of worship is that it's all about God. It's a time where we spend with God and we just like worship Him and we give our all to Him. We just surrender everything to Him. We don't think about the outside world, what's going on around us, what will happen next in a day. It's just something that, it's just a time that we leave for God in our day, which we should be doing every day. How you doing? I'm Adam Abernathy. 
and I'm from um, Chicago, Illinois, United States. And I am here in Koivamaki, Finland, <laughs> doing a DTS with Youth of the Mission. And we have an awesome time in the morning where we have praise and worship. And I've never really been involved in it before I came here too much, but I think it's the most incredible thing to come together with people that you really know and, <clears throat> and praise God together. And it's just the most amazing and uplifting thing in the world. And it really puts a foundation in your heart for what you desire and what you go after. And uh, really structures the way that you think about a lot of things, I guess. Worship has been one of my passions and uh, teaching about worship, not just about prayer, but having a balance between these two. I mean, a lot of churches and a lot of people receive really good teaching on prayer, but not on worship. And we have these different types of ideas and perspectives about worship that it has something to do with music and in the band and and styles but actually mu music is just a vehicle to worship God we can worship God without music we can worship God without words so it is our very lifestyle that is a worship to God says in Romans 12, 1, offer your bodies as living sacrifice. And one of the greatest commandments that God has given is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So what do you do with that? You worship God with all your life, with everything that is in you. Perhaps many people are looking at praise and worship as some kind of way or tool in order to get what they want. They say the power, by the power of worship we do this and that, and by the power of worship we are somehow able to change God's mind or to, to somehow trying to get our will on and that what we want done. Or we doing warfare by praise and worship and we are doing this and that by praise and worship so praise and worship becomes more a tool in order to achieve something but the power of worship there is power in worship but that is not the main goal and that is not the reason why we worship we don't worship because we want to do something or we want to change God's mind we are not praying because we want our will to be done we are worshiping because God is good and it is good to worship. David says it is good to worship because he is merciful, because he is good, because what, because what he is, because what God is, because of his names, because of his goodness. That is the main reason. But when we worship, there is no doubt when we lift his name high, when we give him honor, 
that in this relationship, in this interaction with God, in our praise offering, as the Bible puts it, we are offering the praises like the, in, in the Old Testament the priests would offer uh, incense on the altar. In the same way we offer our praises and our worship and our prayers to God. In that relationship and interaction, there's also a blessing for us in it. When we are interacting with God, when we are meeting God, when we are touching God in praise and worship, when we give Him honor, then He promises to really be amongst us in the midst, that His throne is in the midst of our praise and worship. And when we get touched, we get healed, we get delivered. And in the same way our life got changed because the Bible says when we see Him we will be changed. And so in praise and worship when we see how great God really is, when we see His greatness and magnificence and His power, when we turn our eyes from, from our situation to the greatness of God, our circumstances will also change. And in the atmosphere of praise and worship, we, usually, we, we can get delivered. We can experience that a heaviness has been lifted away from our lives. So there is power in praise and worship, even though it's not the goal why we worship. My relationship with worship began in one meeting. And in that meeting, I realized that when I lift up my hands and I just concentrate on God, there is, there is nothing or nobody who can be touching me deeper than what worship can. My, my deep wounds can be healed when I'm worshiping and that's that's mainly my my deepest experience of worship that God is touching somewhere that no therapist no best friend mother father nobody can be touching it's it's very healing. God is touching in worship some parts of me that can't be reached any other way. that when I'm worshiping God, that it's not, that it's my soul, my spirit, and my body that is worshiping Him. I believe that I can fill Him with everything that is in me. I believe that when I'm worshiping Him, it's a sweet fragrance for Him also. And sometimes I don't feel like dancing, but I know that my spirit and my soul is connected to Him. And sometimes I feel like dancing, and in the same time I know that in, most inner being of me is worshiping Him. It's not about how I act or move, but it's how, I, how I'm connected to Him. How's my, how, how is my soul with His soul? How is my spirit with Him? And also, I want to glorify God with my body. When I'm, whatever I'm doing, I don't want to bring anything bad or sad things towards Him. I want to act with my body that it shows glory to Him, that shows that, I, that I'm thankful for Him for my body. So that's one of... The, that's the way how I worship God.
I'm Michael Howard from Malawi, Africa. And I'd like to share something about praise and worship and how important it is to the believer to really demonstrate uh, what God has done. Uh, the difference between true praise and worship is the difference between a believer that is religious and a believer that has a true intimate relationship with God. Praise is thanking God, blessing God for what he's done for us, that he, that he saved us, he re he's redeemed us from death to life. We have a reason to get excited about that. And not only has God done that for us, he's also provided everything for us. You know, God is just a prayer away. So God undertakes for my physical needs, my health needs, my financial needs and everything. And these are reasons to praise God and get excited. Uh, far too many people don't demonstrate their excitement. And, uh, you know, when somebody comes along and gives you a gift, you know, you just take that gift and you, you don't say thank you. Oh, this is fantastic. You know, when, when I give a, a gift to somebody, I expect them to open it in my presence and say, wow, thank you. This is, this is tremendous. I never expected this. What a blessing. And, uh, you know, if you don't do that, you've robbed me of my blessing. God wants us to bless him for what he's done. And if we don't bless God, and he gave us a tongue, he gave us a voice, he gave us the ability to communicate that he didn't give any other part of creation. And it was because God loves us so much, he wants us to express to him our thanks, our praise for what he's done, what he's given, uh, who, he mean, uh, who, who he means to us in our lives. And, and so we need to get excited because it blesses God. And the more that I bless God, the more that God comes into my presence and does incredible things. So I lift up my hands and I praise him. I dance, I jump, I shout, I get excited about what God has done for me. It's like he's given me the, the best gift the world could ever have given. And that's the reason to get excited about. Uh, you know, I, I get thrilled with people that get excited when I give them that gift. Worship is, is very different. Worship is, uh, is intimacy with God. It's relationship. It's, it's all about uh, knowing God in the most intimate way and, and, then, and then honoring him and glorifying him for who he is. Not what he does, not what he gives, but for who he is. He is worthy to be praised because he's the God of the universe. And so uh, worship can also be a, a, a demonstration, an excited demonstration, but it's all about my relationship. And when I'm truly worshiping God, you know, for, for no reason, the, the tears can flow because I'm just overwhelmed at this incredible God that loves me so much and, and I love him because he first loved me. So, you know, when, the, when there's true love, when I love somebody, I can get so emotional about it. And I think this is one of the biggest problems amongst Christians is that we're afraid to demonstrate our emotions. We've been told, uh, you know, since we're, since we're kids, don't cry, uh, don't demonstrate your emotions. And, 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 you know, kids fall down and the first thing that we do, they start crying. We say, shh, don't cry. No, uh, human beings were meant to cry. God gave us tears for a reason. And one of the reasons that God gave us tears is for joy, for thankfulness, a demonstration of our appreciation when we're really deeply moved. And so when I, when I worship God, you can only worship God by lifting up your hands and just saying, God, I love you. You're so incredible. You're so fantastic. And the more that you begin to say that, and you know that you're in this amazing relationship with God, you know, this tears of thankfulness can just begin to flow. And, and I believe that's, that, that's what really excites God, and that's what God wants. When we stop to think, why am I here? What am I doing on this earth? What's my purpose? Where am I headed? You know, there is a God. God created us, and he created us for his purpose and for his pleasure. And when I am in that place of worshiping God, I come to the realization and the understanding of who I am and why I'm here. I was created to be a blessing to God. The more that I bless him, the more that I get excited about him, the more that I love him, the more that I demonstrate that to God, the more that I 
fully understand and realize why he created me. And I'm at peace. I'm satisfied. I'm at rest. There's far too many people running around trying to find out who they are. What am I doing? Why was I made? I was made to worship God. I was made to honor and glorify this incredible creator who wants an intimate relationship with me. And when I enter into that intimate relationship with him because of what he's done, it's by the blood of Jesus Christ. Then I know who I am. I know why I'm here. I know where I'm going. I know my whole purpose and life and, and, and worship and praise. They're demonstrations. I can get excited. I can jump. I can, I can shout. It's not because I'm an African. People think, oh, well, you're just an African. So, you know, uh, that's what they do in Africa. No, no, no. It's, it's a whole uh, relationship uh, and intimacy with God that, that absolutely demands. And, and the problem with most people is that, that, that they're so used to quenching it, stopping it. Uh, I've seen so many Christians get excited and then they, they, they quench it, they stop it because they're afraid of what the pastor's going to say or they're afraid of what their friend's going to say or what somebody's going to think or what, you know, who cares what anybody thinks? This is between me and my God and so I just have to express, I have to express by emotion, by demonstration, uh, exactly who God is and what he's done for me and, and, and this incredible friendship and love that exists between my creator and me and I and my creator. So that's why we demonstrate it. That's why we can lift up our hands. That's why we can dance. That's why we can shout. That's why we can, uh, and, we, and as we do, uh, it's amazing how much more God comes down into the midst. In fact, one important, really important thing to understand about worship is a, is a statement from the word of God that God inhabits the praises of his people. And what that actually means in, in the Hebrew is that God comes and seats himself upon the throne that is created by the worship of his people. So when I worship God, I create a throne as it were, and God comes and seats himself upon that throne and, and, and involves himself in my life and everything that I am and everything that I am doing. And so the more that I worship him, the, the greater, the more fantastic the throne is that I make God that I make for God so that he can come and sit on it. And that's why it's, it's imperative for us to praise and worship God. It's not, it's not just uh, 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 something that we do. It's not, it's not just, just a religious thing. It's actually a, a demand by God. We, we are dem God demands us to praise and worship him. And, and, and I ought to live to praise and worship him. So really praise and worship is not an option. It's not just singing a few hymns or a few choruses or, or, or listening to a choir. It's everybody being involved. And the difference between religion and relationship is that in relationship, everybody's involved. Everybody's drawn in to be involved. Everybody's got a voice. Everybody's got a tongue whereby they can shout, they can worship, they can, they, they can quietly uh, honor and glorify God as well. But there also needs to be definitely a loud demonstration of what God has done for us, what God, who God is in me. Uh, and, and that's lacking in churches across the world. And it's time that changed. We are here to be demonstrators uh, of our relationship with God. And so it's really important. It's not about culture. It's not about my coming from Africa or, or somebody else's culture. This is about uh, just being free, forgetting about people's opinion and doing what God wants me to do. And God longs for me to praise him and God gets excited when I worship him. That's what it's all about. God bless you. När jag låg sjunger så är det mellan mig och Gud. Låsången är för mig ett sätt att visa åt Gud hur mycket jag älskar honom. Det är någonting som kommer från mitt hjärta. Någonting som jag gör av kärlek till Gud. Samtidigt så är det också ett stort tack till Gud för vem han är och för det han har gjort och för det som han ännu gör idag.
country where you can't really worship God, God freely, it's easy to worship in your soul, in your spirit. And you can feel inside of you the little tang tingling uh, feeling that you really want to uh, shout out and say, be glorified. I want to give you all the glory and honor, Lord. And you want to just give all the thanks to him. That's one of the ways to worship also. But we have learned so um, in the Western world that we can't shout out loud God's name or we can't be truly free. And we are really missing that. But in some other countries, like in Brazil, Africa, it's easier to be free. You see people jumping on very high. You can see people dancing. They are crying out loud, even the old men. But it's not very typical in Finland. But that's something that we really miss here. And I want to see. And when I look at you, Father, I see my Father. And I love you. And I My God. Oh, your mother. And my King. You're all together, Father. 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 Forgive my stubborn, unyielding heart. So many times I want my own way. But God, today, I give myself a fresh and a new to you. Take my life, Lord, and make it come. Vapaa, että joudut vapaa tästä. Se on vapaa, että kaikista niistä raskaista. 